Okay, I just wanted to uh, have a five month update on my stealth camp. Take the time to uh, enjoy this beautiful day, this beautiful fall day. You know, because a fall day like this, I mean, look at how gorgeous it looks, huh? The leaves are falling like snow. And stealth camp is still here after five months. One is location. You've got to have location. Two, I think you've got to have the help of God. Of course, there's always room for a rational explanation. But I always attribute the good things in life to God. Anyways, here's how I always set up my, my camp. I always do this. I find a really straight runner beam. And I run it across either from two trees, which of course I didn't have a tree here. So I had to set up this stand. Put an X, have a Y stick, and lean the X in. And then I just make sure it's really straight, lined up with that tree. And that takes, you know, a little adjusting. Got to eyeball it just right. And you make that straight. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do is try to find a, a stick that doesn't have a bow. You know, like this. Because when it rains, the water will kind of drip like this. And eventually it'll drip down into onto you whether you have a tent or whether you don't but one way to cure that if it ever does happen get yourself some bark like this and just get a bigger piece and you just kind of rest it on top of this thing and then that will cure that problem really quick so it's a real quick solution so Anyway, and you always want to have a peak. See that how I make that peak? That is so important because you want the water to run off this way and the water to run off that way and come right down right here. Because if you don't have this tied off, which look at how long of a rope I had to use to tie it up. I had to tie it off so I can pull it, whoosh, make it nice and tight like that. And when it rains, it just runs off this way. It needs to be tightened a little bit. It's been here for five months, remember? But, uh, yeah, I never got flooded out of here or anything. But if you don't have this, and you just kind of have it laying like that, the water will just kind of flow so fast and so hard in a real hard rain. I mean, you know, gentle rain ain't going to hurt you, but when it rains hard, if it doesn't go off this way, then... You're going to be in a bit of trouble. You're going to be flooded out. So I have that on uh, both sides, as you can see. And it works. Five months now, I haven't been flooded out. Now, uh, as you can see, I have, a, I have a comfort, you know, that you don't have. You're just sitting in, under a rain fly. That is a real, that's rough. When you guys got a rain fly. And let's see what we get in here. You know, we got this. And I got all of this nice, it's, 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 look at this. I could sit in the rain, pouring rain, and this is what it's like in here. And I got all this cross flow. It's very, very nice. You know, you just got to pick a good location where you ain't going to get water underneath your tent. Which, that can be tricky at times. You got to have a location that's good enough and a town that's good enough to, you know, keep you from, you know, being a victim of vandalism or somebody that, you know, whatever, finds your tent. So, the town, the location, and so on and so forth, the ground beneath your tent, that's all very important. And then you set up this runner beam here, and you can do it in one way or another. You can either have two trees, if it fits really good, and if it doesn't, you can just put these uh, tripods up, you know, and then you put the runner beam up. And look at all that space. If it was raining right now, and we're going to get like four days of rain on and off, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I guess Monday before it starts to taper off, I could sit under here for four days and it ain't going to be no problem whatsoever. And I got that cross flow. And now imagine if I had to sit for four days of rain, if I didn't have this, you know, rigged up like this. Imagine how awful it would be if I just had to sit in a sweaty tent with a rain fly right here. It would just be awful. 
So that's why one of the reasons or one of the ways I, I'm able to survive. And you know what? When I don't have a tent and sometimes I don't, I travel without one. I just carry a tarp, some rope, and I do the same thing with the tarp, but just without the tent. And then I just put a bunch of ferns or pine bows underneath my tent, or I go do a cardboard run and put the cardboard under my tent. See? And that's how I do it. And I've been doing this for a lot of years, decades. I'm not saying I never had an apartment or anything, you know, but I just, they just don't usually last long. I've been homeless more than I've been housed, you know. And I've done a lot of travels around the country. And, you know, I ended up in this neck of the woods because it's the most sensible. It works, you know. Uh, it's more inexpensive. And it's probably the economy is good if I ever, you know, needed to get a job or if I never needed to get an apartment and stuff. It's sensible here, you know. It's not all blue and woke and crazy. And it's not full of crazy amounts of homeless people. I don't see any homeless people with me doing this here. I got a 60 mile vicinity that I travel in. I used to travel nationwide, mind you, and I ended up narrowing it down to 60 miles. Some of it's my age, some of it's because of the state of the world, and some of it's because, you know what? This is the best I could find in the country, at least for me. So, I don't see very many homeless. I see a few in Dubois, I see a few in you know, clear field, but I don't see any here. I don't see any in between the towns from one place to another. People are pretty darn good. Um, as far as, you know, comparable to the rest of the nation, the people are almost like angels up here. Um, the town of Johnsonburg, I have a video on that. That's pretty cool. Um, uh, at least the looks anyway. Um, and the natural resources. And then I got little cute towns like Osceola Mills and Phillipsburg. And it's about a si 60 miles from here to like Osceola Mills. And, um, you know, so I kind of make a 60 mile circle. And I'll spend a month or two or a week or two, or, you know, in one area. Or I'll spend a winter, a winter out somewhere for two or three months or four months. Get through the worst part of winter and get some rest. And then I'm back out on the circuit again, and I go from one place to another. And I've got, you know, all of those buckets buried in different places. I got little stashes, you know. My certain areas are kind of stocked up from last year even. You know, I got, you know, certain things stashed. You know, there's always a chance that I could lose my investment or my stash. I'm, I'm aware of that. But, you know, things work out pretty good out here for me. And this, one of the reasons is because of the area. And, you know, I've tried all the other areas. I've been to every state. I've been all the way up to Alaska, the Yukon of Canada. You know, I've been out west, you know, lots. And I know there's a lot more land out west. But I, frankly, I don't like the wokeness. I don't like the uh, the homeless problems. I don't like the creepy, crazy drugs. I don't like the uh, militant kind of uh, almost military operative kind of police forces and stuff. They're really, really scary even though there's some of the places that just said oh heck with the drug situation you know legalize everything like they did in san francisco it, it, they're still they're i don't want to live in a hellhole like that and the prices are so beyond anything that i could ever reach you know i could never get an apartment if i ever wanted to go that route so i'd here if i wanted to get an apartment i can get one for under 500 or over 500 you know, somewhere in the mid fives. Of course, things are probably going to start going up because the American dollar is in free fall. The economy is in free fall. And frankly, the nation and even the world is kind of in free fall. I mean, we're due for some changes and we're all kind of holding our breath waiting for the next shoe to drop. You know, and that's one of the reasons why I like to stay sharp and stay out here. Stay somewhat prepared and stocked up in certain areas. And, you know, I just narrow it all down to this area, in my opinion, even though it does have some winter. Um, it's not the worst winter. It's not as bad as New England. It's not as bad as, you know, North Dakota or even Chicago because it's not quite the wind shear. Um, and, you know, it's got some nice winter days. It's not winter wall to wall. And it's about maybe 90 days. It's really mid December gets bad and it stays bad till early, you know, March. So it, it's only like th less than three months, probably maybe three at the most. And in between, you know, you got some pretty good winter days. So I'm willing to deal with it to have the 
you know, the stress-free environment, stress-free, I mean that in comparison to the rest of the nation that I see in the news and see on YouTube channels, it's like, I don't want to have nothing to do with it, even though there's warmer weather. I just don't want to, it's, it's a trade-off. You want warmer weather, you're going to have to th deal with, you know, you know, a whole lot of other problems that far outweigh its benefits as far as I'm concerned. So I might have to be a little cold here and so forth, but I got a storage unit. And I got it stocked up with emergency, you know, bed rolls and, you know, extra supplements and food and extra boots and extra clothes and extra socks, probably 200 socks that are completely clean and ready to go. I mean, I can get through the whole winter. So if I get wet or something, as long as I'm in somewhere near, you know, within 20 miles, 30 miles or something of that storage unit, I could, I could probably get a ride from someone. And if I couldn't, I could make it in two days and, you know get a, brand, a fresh sleeping bag, fresh socks, fresh jacket, and so on and so forth. Even a fresh backpack if I needed it. So that's how I make it around here. And this is the setup that I use generally, you know? Sometimes I don't have a tent. Um, I just use the tarp. All right. I use a day pack, which has my essentials. There's my big pack. And when I leave, I usually will break this backpack down, take the stuff that I carry that's really important. I wouldn't want to lose in case somebody did find my tent and vandalized it. I put that stuff in here. Then I load up the big pack. And then I kind of roll this backpack up, this little book bag up, and strap it to my backpack. And I always find one of these suckers that's got one of these. This is really what makes it, you know, a great day pack. Because I got my rain gear, an extra jacket, I got an extra, uh, I got a tarp, I got some rope, I got a sweatshirt. That's just part of my gear. Got some foot powder, you should always carry foot powder, always carry extra underwear, socks, and some. I, I use Dawn dish soap, I recommend it highly for your showering and so on and so forth. You know, carry some rope, carry your toothpaste, always carry some extra coffee, you know, you know if you're into coffee, you know. So... Never know when you're going to need that sort of stuff. If I just ended up coming, if I came back here uh, at, at night and my tent was ripped and, you know, I was a victim of vandal vandals, you know, and whatever, or a tractor came through here because they started, you know, plowing down the woods and I just didn't know where they were doing it. Well, then I can just, you know, I'd already at least have some basics, all my important stuff here. You know, I got pens, I got papers, I got, you know, my batteries, I got a flashlight, that sort of stuff too in here. A little toilet paper and so forth. Um, I got a emergency tarp that I have stashed somewhere. I got emergency, you know, socks and, you know, an extra pair of pants and so forth, you know, look at my bucket video. So this is how I live. This is how it works. It's like a cool system. There's a method to the madness for sure. And look at that, huh? This is my setup. I have all this cross flow and I don't have to sit in a bear tent where I have no choice but to deal with really soggy, wet, moist walls and, you know, and with the uh, rain fly on me. Now in the winter time, I would definitely put the rain fly on because that helps block the wind. But in the summertime, when it's sweaty, moist, humid, rainy, I don't want to just sit under a, you know, I'd rather have no tent and a tarp than be stuck in a tent and, you know, just being, a, uh, you know, under the rain fly, you know, and have to deal with the moist, damp walls and stuff. You know, so this is a really great setup. And I've been here for five months, I'll tell you, five months, you know. And I've got a lot done that I needed to get done. Because of my age, I had to give my body, you know, a real big tune-up, you know. I've been working on that for 18 months, but five months specifically here in the gym. And, you know, I'm just about ready to, to move on, you know, to... Um, I don't know, kind of let go. I have to stop being so laser focused on my physical fitness, you know, and now I got to carry all of the benefits of that physical fitness into my spiritual journey. You know, I had to pause. I had to get off the spiritual path for a while. I had to really, you know, come here and be laser focused on my physical health, but it's all for the big picture. You know, all of this is for the big picture in some way. Some way, somehow, some reason, it's going to happen to where I'm going to go, aha, now I know why I've been doing this all this time. Anyways, from Stealth Camp, no road over and out for now.